This is one of those topics that I'm sure is going to rile some people up, get a little bit of the old blood flowing. Thing is with this, I'm a big fan of WB games just in general. Uh, I'm the guy in the room who defends Arkham Origins, okay? I like the majority of their games that I play, and I really have nothing against them as a company. In fact, full transparency, I have worked with Warner Brothers before uh, for promotion with uh, things like DC Fandom, stuff like that. So I really have no benefit to swing up at them in any way. Uh, in fact, it probably is something that if I do often will make me not a viable person to work with. I get that. Uh, and that's fine with me. I don't take it personally. If I see something, um, I don't know. It's, it's like what Captain America said. If I see something going south, I can't just look the other way. I, I can't ignore it. I really dislike this patenting the nemesis system idea from WB Games that's going on uh, that actually has passed and happened. It really, to me, is a problematic situation for the gaming industry. Now, to get into this, one of the sources we're going to use for this is IGN. I will include their article in the description down below because I actually think they did a very good job putting this together, actually explaining what this U.S. Patent and Trademark Office issue will really involve. This is starting on February 23rd of this year's. Warner Brothers has the option to maintain the patent through 2035 providing they keep up with necessary fees. Now, again, patents, fees, it's basically a glorified tax in order to make sure you have an idea down on lock. It is your idea. The patent filed as nemesis characters, nemesis forts, social vendettas, and followers in computer games effectively codifies the functions of Monolith's nemesis system and the sum of its parts as property of WB. Now, the nemesis system was made popular and really introduced through Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. This was a huge game, kind of a sleeper hit. Uh, Middle Earth slash Lord of the Rings slash Hobbit games have been up and down in quality pretty much forever. Uh, Shadow of Mordor was a massive hit, and part of that was admittedly due to the Nemesis system. And the Nemesis system was this idea, and I'm breaking it down very simply for you the best I can. Hardcore, you know, Shadow of Middle Earth fans are going to have a better understanding of it. Essentially, it is a board. You look at the board, and there are characters that are connected to each other. They exist in a hierarchy. There might be an orc at the top. He might have lieutenants under him. He might have bodyguards around him. In order to maintain these social relationships, you as the player can actually interfere with the way that the natural world is flowing. It is an interesting idea. It essentially allows you to turn lieutenants or to turn their bodyguards, anything like this, to your side and use them in what is almost a glorified game of chess uh, in order to weaken higher-ups and eventually control them and make the armies of Middle-earth yours. That is essentially what the Nemesis system was used for in both Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War, and there are a lot of deeper aspects to it. Now, going off of what IGN says here, which is the easiest way to sum it up, while the language in the application is fairly obtuse, as most patent claims tend to be, the short version is that the patent covers a system featuring procedurally generated NPCs that exist in a hierarchy and interact with and will remember the actions of players, have their appearance slash behavior altered by players, and whose place in that hierarchy can change and affect the position of other NPCs in said hierarchy which is, yeah, the simplified version of something extremely complicated. It also covers the social conquest battles from Shadow of War, wherein players can fortify or attack one another's strongholds to see how their army of orcs fares against their friends. There are actually some issues with this. They've been trying to actually secure this patent since 2015, but they've repeatedly revised and resubmitted the application over and over again. Uh, and the problem is that there have been, apparently too many similarities to other patents going on, including those held by Square Enix, the mobile game Conquer, and even Webkins. So there's a lot of problems with this, in my opinion. Um, I am going to kind of talk about that here in terms of what this means. I think the problem is that you have issues here with what counts as the nemesis system. 
IGN did point out that developers can still create similar systems that aren't a one-to-one -one recreation of Monolith's program. However, the Mercenaries and AC Odyssey or Watch Dogs Legion's fascinating census system are recent examples of dynamically generated NPCs and so social networks that would likely not be met with a legal challenge. Though as members of both Mordor Games and Ubisoft teams have said, such systems are a major collaborative effort requiring considerable resources and development time. Here's one of the problems with this. It is actually what counts as the Nemesis system. Again, yes, you can say, well, this is not a one-to-one -one recreation of the system, but how far do you push that? Is a Nemesis system now allowed because they're not procedurally generated? Like, for example, if I went through and designed 250 different uh, military staff, do they work in a system like this just because it's not procedurally generated, even if I copy every other aspect of what was the Nemesis system? Or is that too close? How much do you have to change this to actually make it work? And here's why I have an issue with this whole Nemesis system patent thing, to really just break it down. This is a gameplay mechanic. Yes, it is a system. Yes, it is a way that the artificial intelligence operates. But this is a gameplay mechanic at its core. Think about all the gameplay mechanics over the years that have been invented, that have been shared and refined over and over and over again throughout gaming history. One of the best examples I can come up with for this is leveling up. Now, here's how easy this would have been. Let's say, and I'm sure the hardcore free market people are going to say, well, they should have just done that. Fine. I, you know, I'm not here to argue uh, the semantics of the free market and, and all this other stuff, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. But let's say that I designed the original idea of leveling up in a video game. Now, I submit a patent where I patent and actually control this aspect of gaming, where I'm like, hey, listen, uh, any, I own this. The ability to accrue experience points through actions, inactions, or other such choices throughout the course of a game or multiplayer experience in order to progress a status bar to its natural conclusion of reaching the next level in a ladder system uh, or a digital ladder system or anything like that. I was trying to channel my uh, most professional language there. If I control that system, now, if you come in with a indie game or a small game or anything like that, and you want to do this, well, I'm sorry, but you can't. You can't have a level up system. You can't have the Call of Duty level up system. You can't have the Final Fantasy level up system, even though those are both drastically different from each other. You can't have the level up system in Kingdom Hearts. You can't even have the leveling system in Shadow of Mordor. That's the problem. There is also a huge portion of this that is hypocritical. Shadow of Mordor, in my opinion, borrows from a lot of popular video games, one of the biggest being Assassin's Creed. Shadow of Mordor really obviously uh, was inspired, should I say, in my opinion, by the climbing mechanics of Assassin's Creed, for example. Uh, and one could argue that some of the, mm, I guess, assassin management systems of Assassin's Creed possibly could have also inspired bits of the Nemesis system, which were actually around since Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, years before Nemesis would, or Nemesis would launch in Shadow of Mordor. This is a series that has used ideas from so many other series. It's the same with loot boxes. Nobody patented the idea of loot boxes, right? I know we all hate them, uh, but just in general, nobody patented it. Well, Shadow of War was more than happy to actually use that gameplay mechanic and idea in their game. This is hypocritical at the end of the day, and everyone's a hypocrite in their own way, even I am. But it's a really ridiculous concept to be taking ideas from other games, from other franchises, and essentially one-to-one -one using them in your own, but then claiming that other people can't do that for your idea. No, no, no. Uh, it's okay. I took your ideas. I came up with this one, though. This one's mine, too. You know, it's, it's basically what's yours is mine and what's mine is mine, too, instead of what's yours is mine and what's mine is yours. The video game industry operates very heavily on what's yours is mine and mine is yours outside of brands and properties because it allows innovation. It allows competition. It allows companies to push each other and to actually outshine each other. 
without anyone else doing a nemesis system, and we have no idea how tightly this will actually be enforced. We have no idea how much you have to change it in order to not make it count as patent infringement here. Without anyone else doing a nemesis system, we have no competition for this system. We have no reason to innovate beyond what it's at. WB now owns the ability to make that system. Why should they make it any better? You're not going to get it anywhere else. Why bother? This is a problem that we've seen throughout gaming all the time whenever there's a monopoly on a brand or an idea that doesn't actually matter to somebody as well. An example of this is Madden. It's the same with WWE. It's this idea of, hey, listen, we're the only ones who can make this. There's no competition. If you like wrestling or you like football, you're going to play these games or you can't play them. That's how the Nemesis system is now going to be. And WB has no reason to innovate on it. They also have no push to innovate and no competition in order to force innovation on either side of this. They are willing to take the ideas of other people, in my opinion, and wrap them up into their game uh, and sort of make them their own, but they're not willing to let others do the same thing. It's hypocritical, it's ridiculous, it's, it's basically just saying we own this gameplay mechanic and you can't use it, too bad, piss off. I don't like this. I don't think it's a good precedent. I don't like whenever something similar happens to this. So any whataboutism that someone might have, like, well, what about when these people did this? I disagree with that, I'm sure, too. I don't like this kind of thing in gaming. Uh, I, I don't like it at all, you know? Um, you can get very specific with stuff like this, but at the end of the day, if the first person to come up with an idea in terms of a system like this, or even a sort of genre of game or anything like that, if they try to copyright or I, I guess patent that thing and make it so no one else can do it, we would miss out on a lot of stuff. Imagine if the first person to make an RPG patented the idea of a role-playing game. You are now out thousands of games, both tabletop and video games. This is not something that is consumer friendly, it is not something that is competition friendly, and it is not something that I support in the gaming industry. I don't like it at all. I understand if you don't care, um, but I hate seeing this stuff. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm very interested to hear your thoughts. Uh, maybe you will have a very different take than me. I'm interested to hear that. I really am very much of the side that, look, this is a legal thing. They can do this. A lot of people will try to semantically argue no, they can't. Well, the patent passed. Clearly, they can, under the law, do this. Uh, but there are plenty of things that I think people or, or organizations can do that they shouldn't. Um, I, I just don't think it's a good idea. I don't think it's a good precedent, and I don't support it. Interested in your thoughts down below? Please be sure to let me know. Leave a like if you enjoyed this. Subscribe if you believe that I earned your subscription today. I very much appreciate that as we continue to grow, actually, towards 75K and soon 100K. We appreciate you so much, and we are trying to grow our social media over on Twitter, Instagram. We also have a Facebook account as well, and a thriving Discord server I hope to see you in and be a part of. Have a fantastic day, and as always, stay shway.